Welcome back guys to Design Patterns. Today we're going to be looking at some state patterns and how you can use them in your code. So if you're engineering a new project, then uh, this would be a good thing to add. So we're going to go ahead and just start our normal way and add a place for this. I'm just going to call it state. And of course, we've got to get a CMake and all that in there. And we will add a main. Make sure we got our CMake updated so that it makes sense. Let's call this state state and update our top level CMake to include it. And there we go. Now we should get uh, that added and available to run. We're going to make a state.h here in a second, and this will just be our client code to test it out essentially. Let's go ahead and make the state.h. Now a lot of times I haven't really added the uh, header files here, the executable, but technically you should. So uh, just be aware of that when you're engineering your software. My fellow software engineers. I'm going to say that a lot, and you guys who are in the Discord will know why. Um, but uh, video on that probably Wednesday. All right, so state. Let's think about this a little bit. What do you want to do with a state? A state typically designs some sort of situation that your program is in and it should do some certain thing. So essentially we need a way to, to handle these states to begin with. And so essentially we want some sort of initial engine. All right, in our case, we're gonna call this, well, we could call it context. We could call it engine. I'm gonna call it engine. I like the idea of calling it an engine. So I'm gonna just do a little forward declare because our states are gonna to need to know about engines uh, because we're gonna also store a little back reference in our states so that states can uh, also call back to the engine to change state. That'll make more sense shortly here. All right, so let's go ahead and just uh, make a a base state. So this is going to be the pure virtual state here. And let's make a protected section here and just add in an engine pointer. Now this is not owned by the state, so we're not going to ever delete it or anything like that. We just want to have a potential reference to it in case we want to change it later. And we want to do all our standard public stuff that we need. A deleter there. And I will clean up the syntax here in a second. And also, so if we want to potentially be able to edit the engine and what state it's in, we're going to have to put in a method for that. And it's going to be pretty simple. It'll just be something like uh, this set engine. We'll call it set engine. And it's going to take an engine pointer. So all that's going to do, uh, let's make these some, some other name. Uh, we'll just make this uh, with an underscore. So that way we can uh, put it there and just set it equal to the new engine. Now the states essentially do some sort of work. Uh, so we need to put something in here for that. And uh, we'll make it a virtual. And we'll just say, I don't know, what kind of work do we want to do? It totally depends on what kind of software you're building or engineering. So I'm just going to say do work A. Or yeah, let's do A. Do work A. And we'll set this to equal zero. And maybe we have a do work B here. So that's something we're going to have to uh, build. All right, so let's let's work up our engine a little bit here. So let's make another class. We'll call it engine. And engine is going to hold a member reference, well, not, a member pointer to one of these states. So state, pointer, state. And then here publicly, we just want to have some functions to, to operate on the state. We do want a constructor. We never want to have our engine net, not have any state, make this underscore state. So we definitely want a constructor, at least in our case, depends on what you're doing. You might do it slightly differently, but we're going to make a little constructor here that takes a state pointer. And we'll initialize state to no pointer, even in this case, because, well, Sure, you could initialize it right here, but we're going to do a couple other things just to give it a little control. For example, we're going to instead make a method here in a moment called, uh, we're going to call it transition. So essentially, anytime you want to change state, uh, you're going to have that available. So we're just going to use that function. So I'm just going to go ahead and type it up here, transition to, and then state. All right, very good. We need some kind of destructor here. Because as we'll see, this engine actually has ownership of these states, so it will also delete them. So call delete state. 
So if the engine goes out of contact or goes out of scope or whatever, you delete it, it's also going to delete any states associated. This may or may not be required depending on what you're doing. If you want your states to live longer and uh, exist even when your context goes out of, out of scope, maybe you have several engines and you want to keep your states alive, then you don't want to do this. But it, in our example, we're going to have our engine own these states because they're essentially going to take control of them. All right, so let's make our transition to function here. And of course, it takes a state pointer. I'll we'll call these lowercase state. And now we want to put some stuff in here. So if there's already a state, or if it's already not null, essentially, so we'll say if state, then we do want to delete it, and we delete the state. So that just, you know, just starting off. If we're going to transition to another one, we want to get rid of the old one, at least for our particular case here. So that looks good. And then we want to set up our new one. So we'll just basically set it equal, just like so. There's our private member one, set it to the one we're transitioning to. So constructor, we'll just call this and take care of everything right off. But there's one other thing we want to do here. Uh, we want to call from the state, we want to call set engine so that it has a back reference to the engine. And this is so when we make our do work later, sometimes some of these work functions will have a transition. And that way we'll be able to reference the engine and call a transition to set up other states. So I know that probably sounds like a little confusing at first, but it'll make more sense shortly here. So essentially we just want to go state set engine and we want to set it to this current class that we're building. So that's it. That's all we need for our transition. Now, of course, we need some way in our engine to operate on these. So we would essentially build some more functions and it's going to delegate some of its behavior to these states. So the states could be anything. They could be, you know, anything that might do some work or be some sort of delegation of work. Uh, for now, I'm just going to kind of do some sort of reference of these. But you'll probably get a little more creative with whatever you happen to be engineering with your software, my fellow software engineers. All right. So I'm just going to say request A and just set or call from the state uh, do work A. And you could add more to it, of course, but that's fine for now. Well, we don't really need any more, actually, because this particular state, it's got a reference to the engine. So if it's got some logic in it to change the state, it can do that because of this back reference there. And same with all of these. So this is a super cool setup, and we'll just keep filling it out there. All right, very good. So we've got our engine set up there that takes different states and can do transitions. It's got a little back reference, but now we need some actual states because of course this one is pure virtual. So that being pure virtual is not something we can instantiate. So we just need to make some actual real states here that do stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, we'll just do, let's see, what do we want to call them? I don't know, I can't think of anything great. I'm just going to go off the example I'm looking at is call this concrete state A, of course and inherit from state. And we just want to override all the methods that need overridden, um, which is going to be these here. So let's just copy those down for the moment. And we're going to go ahead and define them in this header. So we just don't need this virtual word. We're just going to have override here, of course, and then it's whatever it does. And I suppose now would be a good time to be able to have some sort of output. So let's go ahead and up here, just put IO stream included. That way we can do stuff with the console and show that it's actually functioning here shortly. All right, so what do we want work A to do? I don't know. We don't really have that much specific design here. In this case, since it's just an example. So we're just going to say, um, yeah, we'll just say the class and uh, maybe what it's doing or something like that. So instead of manually typing these out, we could just use a little type ID trick. Let's uh, mess around with that a bit. Sure, why not? So we're going to include type info and we're just going to say, uh, let's see, we're going to use the type ID function and we're going to use it on this. So that should say concrete state A basically. Uh, and then we're just going to say the function here. We get our spacing right and we'll just say a. That should be fine. And we'll just do a similar thing for, for B for now. So that way we'll be able to see when they're called. And let's just make a second one 
Yeah, we want to have an example of, of several states here. Uh, so let's just uh, make a concrete state B. Copy this down for now and just fix up a few things. And now we're going to do a few interesting things here. This should automatically say state B because of this type ID thing. But let's try another little trick here where we're going to change the context. Say maybe state B, if you call work A, maybe it transitions to concrete state A. So we could do that by going, uh, let's see, what do we call it? Engine. So the states have a protected member engine pointer that is definitely, uh, should be set because when we set it with this transition to, it sets it there. So we should be able to go engine and then transition to and whatever we want. Now, of course, if you have one already in memory, you can just pass that pointer there. But if you want to make a new one, you can just construct it even right here. So we could just construct concrete state A here and that would, so it would do work and then transition. All right, so after this transition, the next time you call do work A, it should call this one here. Make sense? So essentially you can flip your states around as you need. You know, you, you build all the states you want, you have them do the things they need to do, and you have them transition as they need to. And that's essentially uh, all you need to know to get this state stuff working for your software. So let's do some examples and just show it actually working. So let's go over to our main and just uh, fill out a few things. Well, first of all, let's see here. Of course, we need an engine and uh, we're going to need some some of those states. So let's just go engine. I don't know. We'll call it engine one. I probably, I don't know. I guess it could be a pointer. It doesn't really matter, I guess, in this case. But these engines, if we go look at how they're built, requires a pointer to a new state. So we could just do that right in line here with new and we need any of these states that we've implemented. Let's use concrete state. Let's use concrete state B in this case so we can show that transition and then we could just start calling stuff. So we would just go uh, engine one dot uh, quest A. And of course, request A will do the work for A. We know that on concrete state B, it's gonna end up transitioning. So if we call this twice in a row, we should essentially get, well, that concrete state B called do work A and then a transition. And when we call it again, we should see A. So hopefully that all makes sense. But let's go ahead and just give it a run. Switch this to state, hit the run button, and let's see if we get that. Nope, we've got an error. So let's see what we've got here. Oh, just a little bit of error with this type ID. Uh, to get it as a const care array, you got to do dot name. So that's it. So, you know, actually up at the top here, I'm just going to make a quick define. I know this is going to be bad. Uh, we're just going to call it ID name. We'll define ID name as this whole thing. I think this will work. Yeah. Uh, we'll call it, uh, just call it class name. All right. So we're going to define class name to go type ID this dot name. All right, and that's just going to allow us to type this word instead of that whole thing every time, which, you know, you don't need to do necessarily, but I just want to be able to make this look nice and clean in this regard. Cool. All right, now let's try this again. All right, seems pretty happy. Seems to have done what we think. Uh, class concrete state B. Uh, okay, I don't, I don't know why this pointer thinks here, but that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just part of that dot name, I suppose. Uh, called do work A. And then, of course, after that transition, concrete state A did it. Now, we didn't make this super verbal. We could put more C outs to define what everything's doing, but that's essentially it. You can uh, build up this pattern as required as you engineer your software, and it should help you out a little bit. I would not recommend doing this whole define thing here. I'm just kind of goofing around there, but uh, hopefully that all makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And uh, stay tuned for more, more software engineering content. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.